to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And together as a married couple, we go ahead and we're re-watching and then reviewing and then scoring and then ranking all the Marvel movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I was wondering if you were going to get there. Yeah, I, I was trying. I was trying to get there. It's, it's a lot that we're doing, you know. We developed our own scoring sheet. You can go ahead. You can check that out down below in the description of this video. Uh, we made it so you can download it. It's not a virus, I promise. Or you can fill it out online. So without further ado, we are going to dive into our, let's see, how did you say it? Our reviewing, scoring, and ranking of Captain Marvel. So our first category is lead male and lead female likability. And in this particular film, our leads are... They are Captain Marvel and Nick Fury. For myself, I actually gave both of these characters a score of four. Oh, wow. I thought they both had personality. They both had a sense of humor. They were both, without question, badass. Um, but they also both stood for the right things. Um, and that was a big key part of this for me. Nick Fury would go against protocol and go against rules and regulations to do what he felt was right. And that strong moral compass, I really respect. Uh, and I felt like Captain Marvel had the same thing. I mean, she went against the upbringing that she could remember to aid what she'd been taught was the enemy. I gave Captain Marvel a three. I thought she was definitely a badass. For Nick Fury, Nick Fury I gave a two. I grabbed a beer with Nick. Um, I didn't think he really reached the level of badass. The most I've ever liked Nick Fury is in Winter Soldier. What's nice about this Nick Fury is that he is still a little bit more personable and a little more human. He's also a little more vulnerable because he's learning the ropes and I think yep. it was that combination that just made me go, oh this is like early Nick Fury and like sweet Nick Fury and there's, you know, there's something that you can latch on to with that that's a little bit more than the stone cold killer spy. Hero bang ability. Uh, so for Nick Fury, I gave him a zero. And for Captain Marvel, I gave her a two. Um, she's obviously very attractive. Uh, but again, I, this, her personality didn't, um, she, while she had a lot of jokes and I thought she was funny, um, the personality just wasn't, wasn't there en enough for me. Again, it was all very surface level. I gave Carol Danvers, or Captain Marvel, I gave her a score of zero. For Nick Fury, I gave him uh, a score of three. I said Ooh, that I think he could teach me a trick or teach two. Teach me a trick or two, really? Yeah. This was a more personable Nick Fury. This was somebody who I felt I could actually like be attracted to and, and who was approachable. There was a more mm -hmm. approachable edge about him than uh, who he becomes in the future. And, and for that reason, I thought he was charming. And I thought, you know, he was smart and... Yeah. It, yeah, did it for me. So next up is lead male and lead female relatability. I gave uh, Captain Marvel a score of two. I said, it's not me, but it could be one of my friends or family. Um, wow. That, no, you are dead wrong on that one. I'm sorry. I gave Captain Marvel a three. So I gave her a three out of four and said that it's the best part to me, unless I, at least I think it is. But I didn't give this for me. I gave this for you. I gave this because <laughs> it was so it there was it reminded me so much of you that I couldn't just give her a two. And no two is it's not me, but it could be with my friends or family. There were just some moments that just stuck out that I go, holy crap, that's my wife. Uh, one of them was when uh, Captain Marvel is on the ship with the with the Skrulls, and the her memory comes back up, and the guys like like do you know why it's called a cockpit? And she just blasts it. Okay, like, yeah. Yeah, I would do that. <laughs> yep, that's definitely sure. something Bethany would do. And then the other one, the one that stuck out the most to me, was when uh, there's the flashbacks of her as a kid and just kind of throughout her life, kind of always getting knocked down. And she was she kind of grew up a tomboy, and, you know, she was always, um, yeah, and just, like, you know, getting getting knocked down and, you know, in, in the dirt and you know, not, not afraid of that. But she always got back up. And to me, that was just so you and, like, you, you know, your stubbornness and you're, you know, it doesn't, th doesn't matter. You can knock me down as many times as you want. I'm gonna keep coming for you. Uh, you can and, do this all day. Yeah, exactly. And you're, uh, and you know, the, the, the kind of tomboy nature, even though we didn't know each other as kids, um, you know, knowing about, your, knowing about your past through like, you know, your mom, your family, your friends. Um, I knew you were a tomboy and I've seen pictures of you. You can kind of look like Captain Marvel, like as a little kid, cause she was, a, <laughs> she was blonde. I was. So. Yeah, that's true. So, so yeah, so I disagree with you too. It should have been a three. Cause I gave her a three for you. Going back to what my ranks were though. So I completely cut her off. <laughs> uh, I gave Nick, Nick Fury a score of one. I agree. I gave Nick Fury a uh, one out of four as well. It's uh, it's not, you know, some I've seen people like that in the real world, like, you know, they exist. But yeah, I didn't relate to Nick Fury uh, as much as well. Moving on to female empowerment. What role do women play in this film? 
Uh, this movie was like pretty much all female empowerment, I and mean, this is a four out of four. Probably deserved higher. Branching out of Marvel, I loved Wonder Woman. Yes. Uh, the DC movie. But I remember hearing a side-by-side -side comparison that somebody did of Captain Marvel and Wonder Woman after Captain Marvel came out, and what they talked about was the difference between overly sexualizing your female heroine mm -hmm. and making her real. And I thought Captain Marvel did a great job making her real. And as a female audience member, it kind of was a first. And it was groundbreaking on that level. Moving on to the villain. Uh, now, the villain in this one was Jude Law, because I can't say his actual character's name. It was... <laughs> Jan Rog. So their end goal was a little murky. It was murky, for sure. There should be some, like, we want this because of this. Like... Yeah. So that we have conflict. Because if we don't really know what the bad guys are going for, the conflict's not as strong. Well, we kind of decided on... Uh, sort of like the root the root of their desire and, and their end goal was power. It mm -hmm. just happened to be that they wanted power through controlling either the Tesseract or some form of yeah. supreme energy such as Captain Marvel herself. How many people does the villain's end goal affect? Would you give it? Well, so based on... <laughs> <laughs> I, confusing score. Exactly, because I'm going to be honest. When I gave it this score, I felt like it was too high. I had to say that multiple worlds, health and happiness were at stake because whatever it is that they're going for, they're willing to wipe out an entire planet and they're willing to attack Earth and they don't seem to care what gets in their way. Yeah, I think you did give it too high of a score. For me, I gave it a one. I said it really only affects the hero. Ronan sent a bunch of missiles to Earth. Okay, so maybe a world, health and happiness. Maybe there's not even for that one, but a four, no. I gave it a one out of four and I think that's the correct answer. And I think you're wrong. How strong is the villain compared to the hero? So for me, to be honest, significantly weaker. No one stacks up to her. No one compares. There, there is no one equal yeah. to her. Period. She flies into space. She blows stuff up. She sends missiles backwards with her hand. I mean, like, there's just the power of this character. Mm -hmm. And this was one of my problems with it, actually. I'm all about female empowerment. I love that some of our most powerful heroes in the Marvel Universe are, in fact, women. Uh, Captain Marvel, Scarlet, Scarlet Witch. Witch. Like, you have some mega forces on the female mm -hmm. side. That being said, Captain Marvel almost seemed too powerful. Because when you look at heroes, I mean, look at Superman, who seems to have all these incredible heroes. There's Kryptonite. Where was Captain Marvel's Kryptonite? That's what I was missing from this film, is once she gets going, she is not vulnerable. She's invincible. She's, there's, there's no danger. There's no stakes anymore. Suddenly, she wins automatically with very little effort. And while I enjoy that and I love that, there's an element of me that's going, this is too easy. I gave it the same score. I gave it a one out of four. I said that they were... You gave it were... a zero. You gave it a zero? I gave it a zero. Oh, wow. Significantly weaker. Yeah. It's significant. It... Yeah, you know what? I was, almost gave it a zero. So I did not give it the same score as you. I gave it a one. <laughs> Do you care about the villain? This is basically villain likability. And I gave this a zero. I don't care at all about our villain. I gave the villain a score of two. I said he's annoying enough that I wouldn't mind seeing him dead. I mean, they try to establish a friendship and a connection with Captain Marvel and Jude Law, but as you said, it was kind of that, like, you know, uh, teacher, you know, apprentice kind of relationship instead of, like, good friends. Yeah. If we had saw, seen their friendship and, like, a deep connection between them, um, and then we skid his betrayal. That's better. Next up is villain bang ability. Zero. So, so you gave it a zero. Yeah. I gave it a one. Oh! Yep. Well done, Jude Law. Hey. <laughs> Moving on to side, side characters. characters. We have Goose the Cat, Monica, a.k.a. Lieutenant Trouble, Maria Rambo, Talos, he was a Skrull, Korath and the Kree kind of warriors. We kind of put them all, lumped them together. And Dr. Lawson. My ones went to Dr. Lawson and Korath and the Kree Warriors. Uh, I felt they were only there for the plot. So you skip to the ones, I got a zero. Uh, Lieutenant Trouble, I'm very sorry, I give you a zero. I just didn't find, I know they tried to make it like a connection with her and, and Carol, and um, I, it, just, it, it just fell flat for me. For my ones, I gave that to Maria Rambo, again, just... Why, why put, th put that last name in there? It seemed like it was like a bad joke. Uh, I gave it to Dr. Lawson, and I gave it to Korath and the Kree. That's it. Without them, uh, you know, the plot has some holes. I disagree with you on Maria and Monica. I gave both of them a score of two. I said they, they yeah. made our hero more likable, redeemable, relatable, and it wasn't likable 
or redeemable, if I'm honest. It was the relatable element. My threes, well, my threes went to one. They went to Goose. I gave Goose and I gave Talos uh, a three. I thought they were both there for the humor. All right, so next up is plot. How engaging did you find the plot? How enthralled were you in the movie? I gave this a three. I give it a score of deliciously unexpected. I give it a two. I said it was entertaining, but it was predictable. Next up is soundtrack. So this was a great flashback to the 90s. Yeah. Um, I gave it a four. I have not bought the CD, if I'm honest. Uh, four is I'm going to buy the soundtrack if that's still a thing. I haven't, but I do believe that a lot of these tunes are in our Spotify playlist and we've heard them many times. I found myself grooving along to them when they came on. It's probably the right score. I gave it a two. I said a couple of songs got me motivated, got me pumped up. Um, but you were dancing to one. He, I, he missed scored. Exactly. Got, got me motivated, got me pumped up. I said a couple of the songs did. So moving on to humor. This movie was not very funny. <laughs> and uh, most origin stories aren't. If it wasn't for the cat and it wasn't for Talos, I do not think this movie would have gotten, you know, above like a four in the humor category. So I gave it a 15. I gave it a 23. Um, humor was a category that concerned me about this movie. I have to say like, in hindsight, after we finished, considering it was an origin story, mm -hmm. it didn't do as bad as no. I expected. Next up are visual effects. For me, this movie was a three. It's definitely a big screen worthy film. I gave it a two. I said that there were one or two scenes that looked pretty cool. So next up is the love story. We decided that this, the one love story that was in this was really between uh, Carol Danvers and Maria Rambo. You can tell from Maria that who Carol was meant the world to her and, and mm -hmm. you know, in the words of Grey's Anatomy, was her person. I thought it got a score of two. I was like, it's believable at least, but I think what you had mentioned earlier is absolutely right. We don't get enough of it. I wasn't invested in this uh, love story at all, but I gave it a one. I said it puts a nice little bow on everything. Moving on to dialogue. Uh, the dialogue in this one I gave a one, two. I said that uh, it didn't take away from the film, but I can't really quote it much. I gave it a two. I said there were some memorable one-liners, and I think that's a better score. I think that's a fair score, but, you know, if we're talking about, you know, I, I would say that, that that's, I could, I'd, be, I'd be okay with you giving it a two. But now that you're going through who's back got a better score, that's clearly a one. Film. I'm not, why am I trying to tank this film? What do I, what would I have against Captain Marvel to try to tank this film? You just keep knocking it. Moving on to action sequences. Mm -hmm. There were four action sequences, <laughs> and, uh, I gave him a score of three. Uh, so that brings my total action score to a 12. I said I couldn't believe what I was seeing in a good way. Um, I think that a lot of this goes towards just seeing the awesomeness of Captain Marvel, what she's capable of, because the whole film is sort of her journey to discovering what she can do and who she is. I gave action sequences a two. So my total score for action sequences was an eight. Now let's move on to our last category, heart. And for this one, I gave heart a one. I said that it had a sweet moment or two. Um, you know, when uh, Talos gets reunited with his family, that was, that was a nice little sweet moment. I gave it a score of two. I said I got warm fuzzies. Um, I think in part this is because of, by the end of this movie, when, when things are finally coming together and we finally are getting a little more invested in some of these relationships, Carol's about to leave again. Mm. Um, and so I got warm fuzzies seeing her and Nick Fury in the kitchen. Moving on to our final score. So for me... Captain Marvel got a final score of 58. For me, it was an 88, but I also had a fist bump. And it actually wasn't for Captain Marvel. Uh, it was for Maria Rambo when she finally gets that terrible Kree villain chick yeah. off of her tail as they're flying through the canyons. I like that that moment they, they didn't make Captain Marvel save her, that she was able to fend off for herself, which I think, again, another good move for female empowerment. Go ahead and uh, rewatch these movies with us and everything, you know? And uh, go ahead and comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear what you thought about this movie and what your score for this movie was. Because our combined score was a 73.5. But it's definitely not definitive.